Hi, everybody. Good New Year's Eve day to you, and welcome to BiteFortBend.com coverage of Fort Bend County basketball. This is going to be the last broadcast of 2021, the Travis Tigers boys against the Seven Lake Spartans. I'm Roger Smith. Your broadcast pilot for the day is Patrick Kinnick. Hello, my friend. Good to see you. It's been a while. It has been a while. Happy holidays to you. And uh, broadcast pilot, I think, is a little bit uh, a little bit heavy. Well, you're, you're in the pilot, the pilot seat. You're well, going to be calling the play-by-play. -play. Uh, okay, but I've, as far as the pilot goes, I'm not sure about that. By the way, you know what's happening right now, Patrick? The assistant coach, Coach Martinez, is reading a little announcement to the crowd to let everybody know that they can listen to this game live on VipeFortBend.com. You can also listen to it later on the podcast. It is absolutely free, and I know you're probably going to have you, meaning our listeners, yes. are probably going to have some New Year's resolutions. Well, one great resolution to make is to listen to VipeFortBend.com more often. <laughs> that sounds like a good one to me. That's right. And, of course, starting next week, it'll be nothing but district games involving the teams in, in District 26A and also the Class 5A teams in Fort Bend ISD. Okay, I'm trying now to here are the uh, starting lineups as they introduce the Travis Tigers. Travis is kind of a year-in and year-out a playoff team. We'll step aside and be back on VipeFortBend.com. Speeds up to 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Plus, you'll save hundreds over AT&T. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 12621. Restrictions apply. New connect internet 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Compares monthly service charge for Xfinity 600 megabits per second to AT&T 500 megabits per second each with one unlimited mobile line for a year as of 10621. Reduce speeds up to 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. The First Tire and Automotive family wishes you happy holidays with these Merry Christmas of savings. 10% off any and all repairs or $15 off an oil change. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. First Tire and Automotive has supported school and youth sports programs for years, getting you to and from the game always. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireandAuto.com. All right, we are back, and during that last break, you heard some silence, and that's my fault, not Patrick. See, you're the, you're the pilot of the announcing. Thank you for doing that, Coach Martinez. 
Uh, Patrick is the pilot of the announcing, but the technical stuff, if something goes wrong, it is totally on me. So you had about a minute of silence. And, uh, well, anyway, we're going to do better now. And we're ready to tip off this game. Seven legs against Travis. And here is Patrick Kinnick. All right, Roger. It's going to be Josh Ak Akpavwa for the uh, Seven Lakes Spartans. Tipping it off against Jacob Jones for the Travis Tigers. And the ball is being passed about. Some of the players getting a, a feel for that basketball before the game starts. The referee sometimes lets these players get a feel for the ball. You know, Jacob Jones is a tall kid, but the guy he's jumping against is even taller. Yeah, well, that's... Uh, he's, I think he's close about, to seven feet. Well, I say, I think 6'8 is what Coach uh, Shannon Heston listed him at. And the Spartans win the tip. They're coming our way from right to left inside. Little lay-in for... Akpavwa, and it's a little nice lay-in for, for the first two points of the game. The big fella. The wow. big fella. Here come the Tigers now. It's Jacob Jones way on top. It's Alex Martinez driving with his left hand into the lane. He's lost it. Now he got it back. Got it to Jones, who missed a little lay-in. And the Seven Lakes Spartans have it. Long pass ahead to Davis, and it was overthrown. So the Tigers get the ball off that errant pass. Two to nothing. We just started here from the Travis Gymnasium. Zach Martinez has it. The Martinez brothers are out there starting together. Pass inside. Left-hand shot by Ufant. Goes a little hard off the backboard and comes down to the Spartans. Davis has it. Long cross-court pass to uh, Van Horn. Van Horn dribbles down to the baseline. Now the ball back out, and there's going to be a travel call against Bates as he took a little jitter step there before the dribble. And it's still 2-0 Spartans. Spartans come into the game with a 21-3 record. They talked to Coach Heston before the game, and they've had a good season so far. He's been he's pretty optimistic about his team's uh, prospects ahead here. Here's a drive into the lane, tipped away from... Uh, Juan Eddy, who was about ready to go in for a layup, but it was tipped out of his hand, out of bounds. Travis Tigers have the ball underneath their own basket. Juan Eddy cuts down in the lane. Now Martinez has it. Thought about a three. Now he's on the left baseline, and he's in trouble now. He decides to scoop it up and in. That's Alex Martinez. Nothing to do there. How about shooting it? Is his middle name Houdini? I don't know how he got out of that Somehow trap. he got in there and was able to scoop that ball in left hand, and it's 2-2. Two two. Uh, in the corner now come the Spartans. Van Hooser cross-courts it. Shot missed. Ball tipped out of bounds. It's going to be off the Tigers. The shot coming there that time from Bates, and he missed a three-pointer. Apagua showing there. He's so tall, he can go over the back without making contact and not getting called for a foul. Not only is he tall, but he's a big fellow. He could be a tight end in a football uniform. Van Horn has it. Right side. Back out to Van Hooser, who puts in a three from the left side. Grant Van Hooser. First looks like a Hoosier. Yeah, well, I asked him if I asked Coach Heston if it's just like the Hoosiers, and he said yes, I think you could pronounce it that way. So I'll probably be doing that. Now some trouble for the Travis Tigers. Now they get it down low. Martinez has it, puts it up, and it does not go. But he was fouled on a play. That's uh, Alex Martinez. He has the two points in the game for the Tigers so far this afternoon. As we broadcast, as Roger said, the last game of 2021 for Fort Bend. Here's the free throw up and in for Alex Martinez. You know, nice you mentioned smooth. Seven Lakes. They're 21-3. and three, Yes, sir. And they look impressive. You know, they look impressive getting off the bus because they've got so much height. Yes. And if you're in District 26A, you want to get to the playoffs, but you don't want to play them in round one. That's exactly right. They're, uh, we're going to find out a little bit more about it today here. It's 5-4. The Spartans on top. Van Horn has it. Now swing it around, uh, Van Hooser lost it. Went to backcourt, saved by uh, Davis for the Spartans. Now down low, it's tipped 
away. Nice play by Jones on the steal for the Tigers. Down court they come now, trailing by one. Penetration coming from Ufat. Takes it all the way to the basket. Overlays, and there's going to be a foul called on Jacob Jones. Uh, I guess he pushed off on the rebound there. He's not complaining a whole lot. Foul on him. That's his first. And the first for the Tigers. Here come the Spartans. Van Hooser has it. Right side to Bates. Van Horn. Right side. Davis for three on the Sweet right side. Stroke, man. Yeah, he nothing but the twine on that one. And he, he got a lot of height before releasing it, so yeah. very hard to block. Now Zach Martinez has it for the Tigers, who fought to one Eddie. Now Martinez again. He lays it up and looked it. Was there a whistle on the play? I believe they call the charge. Yeah, offensive foul. Well, Alex Martinez drove in there nicely only to run over the Spartan player and be called for an offensive foul. Tough call there. He made the shot too, which makes it even harder to swallow. Hurtful. Yes, it's eight to four, Spartans midway through the first quarter from the Tiger Gymnasium here. New Year's Eve day. Van Hooser, right hand dribble. He's got a big brace on his left leg. Doesn't seem to be stopping him a whole lot, though. Here's Van Horn, and he's going to be pushed by one of the Tigers. Van Horn got down deep on the block area, and he got pushed down low. I believe it was, it was either on Chicory or Jones. Well, it couldn't have been on Chicory. He's not in the ball game, so <laughs> it could have been. Uh, it was uh, either Juanetti or Jones. Here's a penetration. Pass off to Davis. Another three. Looked that like the looked, same oh spot. Oh, man, exactly the same spot. And the same, same result. Stroke. Yeah, same result. Nothing but the net. 11 to 4 now. Spartans flexing an early muscle here. Nice play by Martinez. Got a shot off on the baseline, and he got it knocked away. Down the court come the Spartans. And a nice shot by Bates as he did a little uh, jump stop there at the block. And now the ball is tipped out of bounds off the Spartans on the inbound. It's 13 to 4. The Tigers are trying to weather the early storm here. Well, I'm wondering if Coach Craig Brownson will call one of his timeouts here, but he's up off the bench, but he's just giving instructions. I don't think he wants to call the timeout yet. Well, he's trying to get his players to endure the pressure here. And they're getting a lot of it. Zach Martinez has it on the right side now, guarded heavily, and now he takes the shot from the elbow area, the right elbow, and he misses it. Rebound comes down to Clavette. Right corner, left corner, I should say, Van Horn. He drills a three. That is the third, well, the fourth three already in the first quarter. It's 16 to four, Spartans on top. There's your timeout. Travis needs to get things together. We'll be back. The First Tire and Automotive family wishes you happy holidays with these Merry Christmas of Savings. 10% off any and all repairs or $15 off an oil change. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. First Tire and Automotive has supported school and youth sports programs for years, getting you to and from the game always. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. We're back in the Travis Gym where Katie Seven Lakes boys lead the Tigers 16 to four here in the early going. And Patrick, I noticed I'm looking at the TexasHoops.com top 100 in the state of Texas in both classes 2022 and 2023. So the juniors and seniors, no one from Seven Lakes listed. I'll bet they are offended by that and they can use it to fuel their fire. Yeah, I think so. They, uh, but uh, they're playing as a team today. They're up 16 to four here in the first quarter. Pass off of the left side, nice dish inside, blocked by the Travis Tigers as uh, number 22 Far uh, Farias tried to Put a little floater up there, and it was blocked away. Martinez to Martinez. <laughs> now the right side, it's um, Juanetti. Shot up, no good. And the rebound comes out to Seven Lakes. There's going to be a foul, I believe, on 
looks like Alex Martinez, which might be his second. Now the Travis Tigers do have one player who's in that TexasHoops.com top 100, Cameron Crockett. He's number 53 among seniors in the state, but he's not playing today. That's a big. That's a big but. Uh, yes. <laughs> Although I don't he's mean to say it that way. Slender young man. But yes. Here's our yes, three that's pointer a big again from Bates. That is the fifth three pointer already in the first quarter. For Seven Lakes, they're shooting, as they say, lights out right now. Here's Martinez. That is uh, Zach. Back to his brother, Alex. Long and a three-pointer. Rebound comes down to Juanetti. Juanetti goes up strong, and he's fouled on the play. He'll get two free throws on it. Uh, uh, Farias committed the foul. You know, a few minutes ago, when uh, you were trying to identify who had committed a foul, but you noticed one was on the bench, it wouldn't yeah. be the first time if the officials had called someone who's on the bench as the first free throw is missed. You know, every once in a while, you, you get that more often in football where, where they'll call out the penalty on a certain individual, right. and you'll realize they either don't have that player in the game or they don't even ha have that number on the roster. Right. <laughs> that happens sometimes. Uh, well, Eddie makes the second free throw, so he won out of two from the stripe there, and it's 19-5 to five down in the right corner. Saved by the Spartans. And here's uh, Farias. Down low to the big guy. And it's going to be an offensive foul against uh, Ak Akpapwa. He had a nice little move, and he ran over one of, the, one of the Tigers, though. So he picked up an offensive foul, 19-5, 141 to play here in the first quarter. And the Spartans are really looking good so far including five three-pointers here in the first quarter. I don't know if that's their thing or they're just hot with it today and well, it's working. Yeah, I, I, we'll see uh, if they keep shooting it down low. Pass is a little bit long for Alex Martinez. He's got a finger on it, but couldn't quite gather it in, so it's a turnover for the Tigers. They uh, can ill afford turnovers when you're down by 14 and you're trying to hang in there with a good, good ball club. Here's a pass deflected away as... Uh, uh, Farias gathered it back, but then he was fouled, I believe, by, looked like, uh, Juan Eddy. Didn't look like Juan Eddy hit him all that hard. No, I, I was kind of thinking. Might have been able might, to let that one go, I think. Might have been a successful flop, and he, he did get the call, he being the Seven Lakes player. That would have been, uh, now Cloet now, left side, cross-court pass, Bates penetrates in. Now Cloet down to, uh, let's see, that is Afari, uh, Farias who drills about a 14-footer. So they're getting a lot of points from lots of different players here. You can't focus on any one particular player. That was the underappreciated mid-range jumper. Exactly. Here are the Tigers now. Justin... Mack has it. Now they lost the ball all the way down to the floor. Comes Bates for a slam dunk. He now has seven points and there's going to be another timeout. 23 to 5, Seven Lakes. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Plus, you'll save hundreds over AT&T. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 12621. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet, 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Compares monthly service charge for Xfinity, 600 megabits per second to AT&T, 500 megabits per second, each with one unlimited mobile line for a year as of 10621. Reduce speeds up to 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. I have the Tiger, Patrick. We're down 23 to 5. You know things are going bad when you have to call a timeout with... Uh, 50 seconds left in the quarter. The you second are, timeout. Yeah, you've already used one. Tigers trying to get out of board again. Here's Zach Martinez from three-point land. No good. Fight for the rebound, and Seven Lakes has it. They come on down the floor, and there's some pressure. 
Ball goes out of bounds off of the Tigers, I guess, as Bates threw it off of one of the players, able to save the possession for the Spartans as they inbound the ball with a 23-5 lead. I wish I had the shooting percentage. They must be shooting close to 60% here, including, I think, I think they've made like five out of six from three-point land, maybe five out of seven. Yeah, I wish I had checked on that for you, but I was just kind of attending to some other things. Well, and Roger, sorry, I, I missed it. I wasn't implying that you should have to do that. But, but yeah, uh, it seems like every three-pointer they put up goes in. And there's 10 seconds remaining in the quarter. They're taking their time to get the last shot. Bates dribbling. Now he swings it to the opposite side of the floor. Shot attempt from three-point land. This time it's no good, and the buzzer sounds. That three was... Uh, Priam trying to hit a three. He couldn't do it that time. 23-5 to five after one quarter. So they missed at least one three yes. in that quarter. We'll yep. take a break and we'll be back. It's 23-5. to five. We'll be back on VipeFortBend.com, your broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max and OfficeDepot.com. We thank the Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace in Sugarland for taking care of business every day. And what they do helps us bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. We'll have two or at least two and sometimes as many as three or four games per week throughout the basketball season and playoffs. And then there's baseball and softball, and we'll kill it there too. Patrick. That's a guarantee from Roger. Here come the Tigers now. They got the ball here started the second quarter. Down low they go. Shot attempt no good from uh, Wilson. Rebound comes down to the Spartans. They lead by 18 here as we get the second quarter underway. Van Horn has it. Back to Van Hooser. Drives to the right side. Passes it off to a teammate. That's Priam. And the ball is lost. And here come the Tigers. Back with it. Alex, or excuse me, that's Zach Martinez taking it hard to the basket. And he was fouled on the way toward that basket. The and Martinez I'd twins. Uh, a lot of, I'm sorry, Patrick. That's all right. A lot there of people go. know this, but some people may not, that uh, the Travis uh, twins are sons of Coach Brian Martinez. And, uh, you know, it's good to have going for you, but they're seniors. Or are, are, are they? They are seniors. They are seniors. Okay. Here's a penetration from Mack. And a nice little floating left-hander goes in, and it's 23-7. Tigers trying to hang in there. Maybe drop this lead below 10 and see what they can do. Here's a nice spin move from the Spartans. Nice floater from Steve Blewett. And he hits a two-pointer. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys have scored baskets for the Spartans. That is team ball right there. You bet it Good is. give and go pass and a layup. It's going to go for Mack. Nice shot attempt there, and it went in for him. It went off the rim a couple of times, but he was fouled on the play as well. That's his second bucket. He's trying to get his fifth point of the ball game here. You know, it seems like in the past, Patrick, when the officials would make that signal and it's, he's fouled in the act of shooting, they would be very theatrical and wild. Yeah. And but not so much anymore, although our official today was demonstrative there. The free throw was missed, unfortunately, for Mack. And it's 25 to 9. Van Horn down low. Left baseline is Priam, and he missed the shot. Now there's a foul on the rebound, and it's going to be a foul against Seven Lakes. What they used to call a loose ball foul, I guess. So the Tigers have it back. I noticed that uh, I think you are a good noticer, Roger, and I think sometimes I do too, and I'm going to tell you what I've noticed here in a minute. Here's a pass on the left side, penetration. Now dish to the right side, three-pointer, no good. That came from um, 
Wilson and Spartans have it come down now. And it's a 25 to nine lead, shot attempt from three point land, no good. One of the few they've missed, Van Horn missed it that time for the Spartans and here comes Zach Martinez for the Tigers. He takes it all the way to the basket and he dishes it off to the right side, shot attempt, no good, long. And the shortest guy on the floor has it, Van Hoosier on the rebound there. Came out of nowhere and just nabbed that ball off the ground. Blewett has it for the Spartans. I'm trying to get all these players here. Garcia is in the ball game for the Spartans now. He has the ball. Van Hooser, right corner. Shot attempt is up and good from Priam. Another three. He's a lefty. Man, we got one, two, three. They got five guys have hit a three pointer for the Spartans. That is pretty impressive. Can't focus on anyone. Here's a Nice drive and a layup from Matthew Wilson. I could have, I could have swore he took a little extra. Yeah, step I was going to say I thought he got away <laughs> with the travel. Looked like he uh, was a running back for the first two steps there, and uh, they let they let that go. And there was not a whole lot of complaining from the Spartans, but uh, from this distance, it looked like it was a travel. You know, a couple of minutes ago, you said you were going to notice something. Right? Oh yeah, this the uh, referee on the far side. Wearing a mask, and he's got a it's it's a it's a zebra, a zebra mask. Oh, really? That it, it yes. matches his it matches his uh, his shirt. Good notice there. I've I've never seen an official wearing one of those. That's a pretty amazing. I they, hope never to see it again. They got so many, <laughs> so much. And, and I'll, I'll I'll tell you what else I've noticed, and maybe you can help me figure this one out. Here's a lot of contact, ball stolen away by Jacob Jones. Looked like that was uh, college playoffs going on right there. And that play, good Put drive by Mack, and he's fouled on his way up, and it might be off the pass, though. On that last thing that you described, Jacob Jones, it looked like he just kind of pushed <laughs> yeah, the player away from the ball and picked up the ball and said, look at me, I got a steal. P pushing the guy away is okay, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's uh, part of the rule. No <laughs> blood, no foul. It sure did look like there was plenty of contact. Here's Mack at the free throw line. He's going to go for a one and one here. It's like Michael Irvin pushing off to catch a pass in football. I saw a lot of those. He was shameless. Free throw is no good. Another thing that you've got to make sure you can do when you're trailing is make those free throws. Here's Bates. Van Horn has it tipped away, and it's stolen. Layup up and no good from Juanetti, but the rebound comes down to Travis Tigers. Here's Zach Martinez being fouled, but no call. And now they settle it down. Mack has it. Martinez. Ooh, he had a nice try there for Mack, but it was a pass was behind him. Ball goes out of bounds off of the Spartans as uh, Samiski lost handle of it. He well, you know, Patrick, something I think I see here, and it may be a duh, but... A lot can happen during the district season. We still got a full month before, you know, we even start thinking about playoff matchups. But I don't think Seven Lakes would be a good matchup for the Tigers in round one. I, uh, <laughs> I don't think it's going to be much of a good matchup for anybody here. Here's a pass that's deflected as Nick Carroll tried to penetrate. Spartans come down with it all the way to the basket. No good on the shot. Back up again is Davis. He missed his first one. Went back up again off of his rebound and laid it in. He has eight points here in the first half. Mack has it for the Tigers. Jones looking down low. Juanetti takes it in there, but it's blocked by the big guy, Akpavwa. Here comes Bates. Left corner, three-pointer, no good from Samiski. They wanted, it. they wanted another guy to join the three-point barrage. Now there's a foul here called by the referee with the zebra mask. He had to pull that mask down to give the call, though. Yes, of course. Now here's the other question as we observe more things here with a 19-point game going on here. I see two of the referees with gloves on. Now perhaps you could tell me what's that all about. Well, I've never I think never uh, if it, I've seen that before. Maybe the same reason Dusty Baker, I saw him wearing what appeared to be rubber gloves throughout the baseball season. I think that hand-to-mouth or hand-to-face transmission is something that people have been worried about. Well, maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Here's another free throw missed. Juanetti this time misses a free throw. Travis Tigers have missed. I got 
four misses from the free throw line. A couple of those are front ends, and that shot from the left side, no good. Hit the backboard that time. And here side comes... Side of the backboard. Side of the backboard. <laughs> I, yeah, I should, I should have clarified that because <laughs> it's one thing to hit the backboard and another thing to hit the side of the backboard. You know, so, another thing, though, if you're wearing gloves, what if, you know, in the course of a game, an official or a coach is doing a lot of fidgeting and stuff, sometimes you don't realize if the glove has something on it and you touch your face, just right. kind of in forgetfulness, you yeah. know, what good is the glove? Yeah, if you, uh, yeah, so I don't really know. Uh, it's interesting, but two of the refs have them. Not that that's a big deal, but just observing. Here's Van Horn, right side, three-pointer, and he nails it. That is his second three-pointer. Yogi Berra was uh, credited with saying you can observe a lot just by watching. <laughs> love this, love that line. Here's a nice penetration and strong move to the basket from uh, Jason Wanetti, and he lays it in. Another three attempt. No good from Samiski. They, they, they're trying to get him to get a three. They got uh, three attempts from him, and he's missed all three, unfortunately, for him. This is Martinez now. Zach on top. Mack has it left side. Jones takes it to the basket. Nice drive, but he underlaid. The, uh, and then he committed a foul. Then the, uh, the, yes, the, uh, the classic missed the easy shot, foul the rebounder play. How many times has that happened? I thought of something, of Patrick. I must, I'm sorry I interrupted you again. It's all right. I got to resolve to stop doing that so much in 2022. But something people need to know, we have an interview with Matt Malatesta, the chief content editor of Vipe and Vipe Magazine. And uh, you'll learn a lot about the state of high school athletics and how the selection process of colleges looking for the best high school athletes is going. And we learn a lot about what happened on early National Signing Day. Free throw attempt from Gabriel Farias is long, and the Tigers come out of there with it. Martinez to Martinez. This is uh, Alex, and he passed to uh, Chicory, who had a little trouble with it, but now he got it back off to uh, Zach Martinez, trying to direct a little traffic. He penetrates the left side. Shot attempt from the left side is nothing but the air from uh, Chicory, and he doesn't want to remember that shot too long. 33-13 is our score. The Seven Lakes... Spartans got off to a quick start and they've just continued here in the second quarter. Here's Bates, left hand dribble, left side. Guarded by Martinez, Alex Martinez. Now another three attempt, left side, off the bracket, no good. And here comes Jones with a rebound and he's fouled on a rebound. Well, well it was on the rebound, but he was, uh, he was actually dribbling down the floor, so he might get some free throws here. So it was... Farias, who, you know, he got fouled by Jones, who followed up a, a mistake with a foul, and, and he just missed a shot in the open court, and he fouled Jones. So he did so the same thing. Yeah. Exact turnabout. Here's Jones' free throw. This time it's good. By the way, um, stay with us at halftime for that Matt Malatesta interview. You might hear someone talking about your favorite college listeners. Just saying. You better listen up. You better listen. When, when Matt Malatesta speaks, you got to listen. Second free throw. No good from Jones. 33-14. to 14. The Spartans of Seven Lakes. On top and in charge. Davis. Now he's going to try to post a man up. Nice swing pass. One more pass to Bates for three. No good. Rebound down. Comes on to Mack for the Tigers. Nice rebound by the guard. He takes it all the way to the basket, left-handed, and he lays it in. That was an impressive shot. He rebounded it, took it all the way to the down the floor, and laid it in. 33 to 16. Spartans have the ball and they're taking their time with that 17-point lead. Davis, right side again. Swings it to the left. Van Horn for three. No good. This time he's hit a couple. And that time he was a little bit long on it. Oh, what an inadvertent foul coming from Davis. He ran into uh, Alex Martinez, who was gathering the ball about uh, 25 feet out of, from, the, from the basket, 30 feet out. Just ran into him. You know, we, as we broadcast 
high school basketball on this New Year's Eve day, there's something we're missing. You probably know what it is. It could be on TV. As Martinez hits the first free throw. Um, in El Paso, the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl is going on right now. They started it at 10 a.m. El Paso time. Well, I'm what, recording it. I'll watch it later, of course. Who's playing in that game? Uh, Western Michigan and somebody. It's probably the least intriguing matchup they've had in a long time. Second free throw is good, and the lead has been cut to 15. That's as low as it's been for quite some time. 33-18 as Alex Martinez is 4 for 4 from the free throw line. He has 6 points for the Tigers. Spartans taking their time. Bates, right side, close to the half-court line now. They look like they're going to go for the last shot. Ten seconds remaining here in the first half. Bates. Davis. Five seconds. Van Horn. Pump fake. Drive to the basket. In about a 12-footer. Bounces around. No good. And it ends on a positive note for the Tigers. But it's 33-18 to 18 Spartans after the end of the first half. We'll be back with our visit with Matt Malatesta right after this on VipeFortBend.com. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Welcome to Halftime. Glad you're with us on VibeFortBend.com, and it's time to talk to Matt Malatesta, the managing editor, did I get the title right, of yes. Vipe and World Headquarters and so forth? You got it. Well, one thing that I've noticed, I always like to watch Todd Freed's program, H-Town High School Sports, which comes on CW39 and also AT&T Sportsnet, and it's powered by Vipe. And one of the recent editions, you talked about early National Signing Day, but there's still plenty to talk about coming up when the other National Signing Day is coming up. So what are some of the things that you're most, uh, some mysteries that maybe you're, you're looking forward to finding out where different athletes go? Well, I'll tell you what, it's, yeah, much of the hay is already in the barn. We've got a couple of guys left. Harold Perkins is one. He's from Cy Park. So we're not sure where he's going to end up, but that will come soon enough, probably this weekend. But other than that... You know, there's just a lot of Division One, Division Two type guys that are trying to figure out with all the coaching movement where they're going to fit in and, you know, what schools have interest in them. The portal has totally changed recruiting. And it's really tough for kids that are in high school now because they're battling transfers, A, you know, to like a Sam Houston. Sam Houston is a great example. Sam Houston's going to take a ton of transfers where that used to be wide open for high school players in the city of Houston to go to. So you're going to see a lot of that, um, you know, moving around. So my advice to high school kids that get offered, don't be afraid to commit because you want to hold your space. But there will be a few trickle in in the later signing day, but mostly it's already done. You know, it seems like it's almost kind of a, I don't know, maybe a, a high school version of what I started to see in the 90s, I lived out in El Paso and Neil McCarthy was the head basketball coach of New Mexico State. And they were, sometimes he got criticized for kind of reworking his team with JUCOs every year, but that's just kind of what became the way of the world. We saw John Calipari basically perfect it in Kentucky basketball, but it's also going to be true in football, I suppose, now too. Am I right? Yeah, and Kansas State used to be great at that. Um, when Bill they used Snyder. to, Bill Snyder used to do so much um, recruiting the JUCO landscape. Now you could just virtually recruit the portal and not even recruit high school kids. Um, Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss has kind of taken that route. He signed maybe three or four kids in early signing day, and now he's just recruiting the portal. By the way, as you were talking about that, the reason uh, they didn't see it on radio, but but I smiled because it almost seems like it's a dating site. You know, just kind of. Uh, 
people and institutions can let everybody know that they are available. <laughs> they are. And what's funny is I think Wyoming was the school which actually put an ad in the New York Times looking for a quarterback. I mean, that, you know, if that says it all. But, you know, the movement, I don't love it. Um, I think there has to be some sort of reboot of how this is going to work. So we'll see how it plays out. Well, I'm like you in that I don't love it. You know, I kind of like things. You know, I, I grew up when you could think about a team's lineup in whatever sport, and it kind of stayed the same for a good five, six, seven years, and you knew who all the players were. I know that's not going to change, but uh, let, me, let me throw this question at you before we wrap this up. I know that uh, here in Texas we're very proud. And people who went to big universities in Texas are, are proud of their team, and, man, they, it just galls them when, when they can't get over on the others. The Texas A&M football recruiting class was just astronomically good, even at early National Signing Day. And, you know, it's been 1939 since the Aggies have actually won a national football championship. Do you think in two or three years, based on what they have coming in, that maybe they can get that done? Well, being an LSU fan, it's, you know, your fingers crossed that they don't. But what Jimbo Fisher has built, and you're seeing what they're doing, they're building with the offensive defensive line first. This is, this is a historic moment for them because they're the number one class likely as it relates to all the recruiting sites and they filled needs really important needs up front in the trenches and I think you know the A Aggies are dying for this they're dying they really really foresee them winning a national championship in a couple of years but how much pressure does that put on Jimbo Fisher if he doesn't win a national championship in a couple of years, but I think their offensive and defensive line are being spectacular. I think Connor Wigman could be really, really special as a quarterback. They've got skilled guys, but here's the other thing. The portal can bring us, bring a team down because not everybody can play. That's right. There's only 11 guys on the exactly. field at each time. Exactly. So somebody's going to be disgruntled, and how they manage that is going to be very interesting. But they're set up for success. If there ever was in the history of the state of Texas, UT used to do this. You know, they they would be crowned, you know, the national championship, national champions for recruiting in February. They got it done one time. Let's see if Aiden could do it. I think they can. They got the resources. Now the target is going to be massive on Jimbo Fisher's back to deliver them a national championship. All right. Well, basketball half times are short. I wish they were like football. Ha no, I don't wish they were like football half times. But if they were, we'd have more time to talk. Thanks, Matt, for being with us, and Happy New Year. Roger, you are killing it in Fort Bend, the voice of Fort Bend. Thanks so much for all you do for Vibe, and uh, we'll see you down the road. My pleasure, sir. All right. We'll be back. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. What is Vipe like? Live. Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. 
Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 12 6 Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Welcome back inside the gym at Travis. Just a few seconds away from resuming this game that Seven Lakes has dominated thus far. They lead it 33 to 18, and this is the last pre-district game of the season. It's the last game period of the year 2021. So Patrick, uh, you know, just in the interest of everything being entertaining, we hope it gets a little bit closer, but if it's not, we're going to keep everybody entertained to the final second of our last 2021 broadcast. We're going to do the very best we can. 20, 33 to 18 is the score here at halftime. As the Spartans will inbound the ball, they'll be going to the far side of the floor now from where we're sitting. We're in the, what would you call this, the southwest corner, I believe, was of the gym here yeah now that makes me think of AT&T Stadium where we were in the Brad Sham broadcast booth and felt very honored to be there but it's up in the corner we were in the corner yes uh, it was an honor to be there that was a fun fun game unfortunately it was uh, it wasn't a victory for our team but that being the Marshall Buffs yep they played a pretty good game though and it was uh, close to the end here's a a game going on out here let's see what's going on it's a pass out of bounds off of uh, Davis and so the early turnover here in the second half benefits the Tigers let's see if they can get some scoring going here they got 18 points at halftime that's 36 if you multiply that by two and I don't think that's going to be enough to win this ball game they have to get the scoring going here penetration from Jones he's has nowhere to go. He decides to shoot it up there, and then Van Horn just taps it out of bounds on a nice block. 7.29 here to play in the third quarter. Inbounding is Zach Martinez. Jones has it. He spins. He's still pivoting. He shoots it up there. No good. Pretty good defense by the Spartans. Tough chance for Jones to get it in there. And now the Spartans have it. Here's Davis, Van Hoosier, right side back to Davis, top of the key, well out toward the half court line. Passes it off to Bates. Try to get it inside of the big guy, Akpovwa, and that was overthrown, and here come the Tigers. Left side three pointer off the backboard, around and out from Mack. That didn't look too good from the start. Didn't quite get a good grip on that one. Van Hooser. Being guarded way out on top by Juanetti. Left side baseline jumper is good from A.J. Bates. That was smooth. That's his seventh point of the ball game. Juanetti takes it to the basket and he's fouled on the play by the big guy. Ak Akpavwa. You know, a couple of possessions ago, they overthrew the big guy, and I'm thinking, how can you overthrow the big guy? And it's like overthrowing uh, Manute Bowl or Yao Ming. Well, He's not that tall, but, no, you know, but still, relatively speaking. Yes, there's a free throw attempt is good from 
Juanetti, he was uh, one for three from the stripe in the first half, and he nails his first one here in a second. Juanetti's been playing a good game, even though Travis is down. He's really been hustling. And he has. He's, he's, he's going to be a points. helpful player in district play. A game uh, without your one of your best players being uh, Cameron Crockett, sometimes that helps develop the depth. Here's a nice pass. Down low to Bates, and that pass was made by Van Hooser. He found Bates alone underneath the basket and he lays it in he found Bates because the Tigers completely lost Bates. somehow they somehow they lost them that's right Jones Martinez down at one Eddie the ball is tipped out of bounds off of <laughs> off of the Tiger oh excuse me off of the uh, Spartans it kind of looked like it went off of one Eddie there but Tigers might have got a break there here's Martinez for three on the inbound pass short Bates has got it all the way to the basket. Lays it up, but he's fouled on the play. And the foul is going to be on Zach Martinez. By the Ref way. Referee got in there in a hurry that time to make sure there was no shenanigans after the play. When I think about Seven Lakes in 2021, well, I think about, I guess it was late 2020, their, their girls volleyball team won a state championship as the first free throw rattles in. And then the Ridgepoint girls knocked Seven Lakes out of the volleyball, um, yeah, the volleyball playoffs in the first round of this, the playoffs in the fall of 2021. Here's a second free throw, and it's good. And a famous former Astro was in the Merrill Center. You know who that would be? Let's see. Let me think about that, Zach. He's also a broadcaster. Martinez up here. Here's a layup attempt from Mack, and he puts it in. Put it over the big guy that time, and he's able to get it in. Nice little teardrop on that yeah, one. Yeah, 39-22 is the score. It's been basically 17-20 to 20 point lead for the Spartans all, all afternoon once they got that lead, and Davis does a little fade away from about 14 and puts nothing but the net there. Three-pointer, no good, and it could be a push-off against Jones. I think that might be the second time he's done that today. A little push off on the rebound. <laughs> and uh, sometimes you need a push. He had to push the big guy, <laughs> Akpogwa. He's a big 6'8". Big guy for the Spartans. Bates, shaking bake, left baseline, short on the shot though. Mack has it for the Tigers. Long pass down to Martinez. And he's Commits the foul on the layup. Alex Martinez tried to take it in, and a good job by Van Horn to set his feet. And he Although, beat his fist on the floor, and I think that he just thought it should have been a blocking foul well, I think instead Coach, of a charge. Coach Bronson feels the same way. I think, yeah, he might have been moving a little bit, but uh, I don't know, a pretty good position. But it's hard to know without that replay, right, Roger? Yeah, that's true. Gotta and I, I read uh, Coach Bronson's lips. I heard, well, actually, I heard him say, that's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he apparently felt he was moving. He might have been a little bit there. Here's a nice pass down to Akpovoa, and he lays it in. He only has two points in the game. Now a steal. Van Hooser lays it in. Grant Van Hooser stole it and then laid it in. Now there's some contact down the floor with Davis and Alex Martinez. And... Davis was saying that Martinez was kind of trying to use yep. his left arm as a bar to keep him away from the ball. Yeah, I, there was contact, both both players there, and most of the time that's going to go against the defense. Here's a pass to Mack, drives to the left side, nowhere to go, pass back to Juanetti, down low to uh, Zach Martinez, but the ball was tipped out of bounds by... Bates, A.J. Bates, played, made a good defensive play. It's a 23-point lead for Seven Lakes. They've been, I would say they've been cruising pretty much this whole game. Nice drive by Martinez, and he's fouled on the shot. That's Alex Martinez. He's a gritty ball player. He's not going to back down to anybody. And he took it into the land of the Giants, laid it in, and he was fouled. That's eight points now for Martinez. Four of those eight coming from the free throw line. Trying to add to the total from the free throw line again. 
now there's some discussion going on. What are they telling these guys to settle down or okay, what? Okay, uh, number two is Davis. He just went up and he got real close to Martinez, who was staying there waiting at the foul line. I don't know what that discussion was about, but it took him 30 seconds to hand the ball to Martinez for the free throw, which he made. We can well imagine what might have been said. 21-point 20, lead for the Spartans. There's Van Hooser again. Nice drive, but he missed his shot. Van Horn has it. Van Hooser now left side looking for somewhere to go. He's the man I mentioned earlier who has the left knee in a brace. But he's moving around pretty good. Shot attempt, no good, but a rebound for the Spartans. Van Horn fakes it, now shoots a three, short on it, and the rebound comes down to Jones for the Tigers. Martinez, Zach Martinez has it. He's looking for somewhere to go. He finds his brother. Alex has it. Now he drops it off to Jones, who takes it strong to the basket and lays it in. What a nice drive and a shot from Jacob Jones. He had a little, uh, I don't know, he had a purpose that time. He was bound and determined. He was resolute. Yes, to get that ball in there, and he got it in there. And then he got, drew the foul as well. See if he can cap it off here. He's got it for the free throw. And it's down to an 18-point game. It was 23. You know, when well, we... Well, it's down uh, to 17 now. I'm when sorry. we get one of those moments where we have to wipe sweat off the floor or something, uh, I have something that I thought about when, when I hear the last name Van Horn, who's on the Seven Lakes team. All right. Let's ooh, anxiously await that. <laughs> Cluette has it. And the ball stolen away by Alex Martinez, but the ball was out of bounds. He lost real estate there. He tried to tip it away and then gather it, but couldn't quite save it. Yes, if this had been Canadian basketball, <laughs> he would still have been in bounds. That's right. There's no such thing as well, Canadian basketball. We can, we can dream about it. Van Horn takes it in the backcourt. Now Bates has it for the Spartans, who lead by 17, and they've led all the way. Davis posting up Martinez. Long cross-court pass. Now Bates has it. Van Horn right side. Back to Bates. Penetrates the lane. Little floater is good. They got several guys who can put that ball in the basket. That is uh, A.J. Bates. Nice move by Jones, but he overlaid his shot. Fights for the rebound. And it's lost. And here comes Martinez with it. Back floater from about 10. No good. And he goes up and grabs a rebound from Van Horn. Good job by Mack. Looking for somewhere to go. Juanetti has it. Here's uh, Martinez penetrating the lane. Back to Juanetti. Lays it up and puts it in. Oh, the Tigers showing some grit here. 47 to 30 is the score. And some of the fans here are... It looks Letting like an know. inside joke yeah. or something. <laughs> I don't know what it is. About five guys got up off the bench. Here's a long three-pointer, and it's good again from A.J. Bates. He is filling up here in the second half. As encouraging as it was to see that great Travis possession and the perseverance, and they finally got the basket, yep. they're still one point farther behind Here's after three that three. Point. That's right. Zach Martinez short on a three-pointer. Here's the Dav Davis for the Spartans. Here's uh, Bates again for three-point land. He's filling it up. He's got 14. Make, make it stop. He's got 14 in the second half, including a couple of threes. It's uh, 122 to play in the game. Uh, the third in the quarter. third. Sorry, yeah. third quarter <laughs> is 53 to 30. Yeah, and before we take a quick break, I'm going to mention the Van Horn thing. Yes. Um, there's a little town called Van Horn, Texas, and it was made famous by John Madden, who passed away this week. God rest his soul. What a unique guy. So enjoyable to listen to him announce football. But um, he had that Madden cruiser because he didn't like to fly. So when they moved him all around to do all the various games, whenever he passed, you know, came from a point west to go to Dallas or went from Dallas going west to Arizona or L.A. or something, he would stop at the Chewy's restaurant in Van Horn. There's no connection between the Chewy's chain that you see all over Greater Houston and that one and only Chewy's in Van Horn 
John Madden loved it. If you're ever traveling that way by car or truck, stop at Chewy's and Van Horn and look at all the wall hangings, all the pictures of John Madden, all the the memorabilia that he left and signed for them. So he you know, was there multiple times. Multiple sure. times and over the years. Whenever they passed on I-10 going that way between Dallas and the Western Time so Zone, where he is, always stopped there. Where? What's the largest city closest to Van Horn, Texas? I'm going to say Fort Stockton, and we missed out on the break, but that's okay. Here's uh, Fort Stockton. Zach Martinez back to uh, Wilson, who's checked in, Matthew Wilson. For the Tigers. Zach penetrating. A little floater from 12. Good. Nice shot by Zach Martinez. That's his first bucket of the ball game. 53 to 32. Van Horn for the Spartans. Debates back to Van, Van Horn. Now Davis posting up on the right side. Dribbles back out for the three pointer. And it's good. Another three pointer. I'm going to count those up at the next break, Roger. They've got over 10 three pointers here in this. In this ball game, they are really shooting the ball well. Martinez, Mack, passes it off, down low, it's good for, oh, Chuk, Chuk oh, let's see, Chuk Chukwu Kelu. Chukwu Kelu. I thought I had it earlier, and then he hadn't played for a while, and now, now he's in the ball game, and he scores one. And he puts the pressure on me when I had to put his name on, out there. Here's... Bates, three-pointer now from Davis is no good. Good hustle by uh, one of the Spartans, and he's down in the corner. That's can't the part we can't see from here. I can't here. see who that was, number four. That was uh, Cluette. Great job of hustle. Now the, the clock said zero, but what are they doing here, Roger? I, I heard the, horn the buzzer, off. so yeah, I think uh, if there are going to be foul shots, they might be with... Well, well, I, well, they've put a second on the clock yeah, now. I think they said the, he made the save before the buzzer, which I'm not so sure, sure that was really the case. But they're going to get a second to shoot as if they needed more more shot attempts. Here's Van Horn for three. Of course it goes in. Of course. From way out in West Texas, That's his Van third. Horn drains the yeah, three. how about that? Perfect timing on off your story there. Yeah. After three quarters, the Spartans of Seven Lakes are really on fire here. 59 to 34. Yeah, I got more to say about these Spartans. Technical foul on the Travis bench, and that will be what starts the fourth quarter. We'll be back. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. The First Tire and Automotive family wishes you happy holidays with these Merry Christmas of savings. 10% off any and all repairs or $15 off an oil change. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. First Tire and Automotive has supported school and youth sports programs for years, getting you to and from the game always. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireandAuto.com. Okay, so right before the three-pointer by Van Horn to beat the buzzer that ended the third quarter, there was a play where the ball went out of bounds. We heard the buzzer, and we looked at the scoreboard, and it said no time was remaining. The officials, for whatever reason, had the timekeeper put an extra second on the clock, and that enabled Van Horn to get that extra three. And so when the Travis coaches voiced their displeasure at that Lemony Snicket's unfortunate series of events. They were called for a technical, and Davis drains the first of the technical foul shots. Well, <laughs> Roger, you described it very well. Uh, we were both a bit dumbfounded that there was time on that they put time on the clock because it was a great play to save the ball off of one of the Travis Tigers as Davis makes the second free throw as if they need more points. Um, so we were a little... Uh, I don't, I don't know, surprised that they put the clock a little a flummoxed a little, an extra second on the clock and then of course as I said at the end of the quarter of course Van Horn's going to hit that three pointer after the extra time was put on 
So I guess technically the score at the end of three quarters is now 61 to 34 since Davis made the two I think you're right. foul shots. And I suppose. They're still talking to Coach Bronson who is, he's just putting his hands up and saying, okay, I've had enough too. And I'm not, not sure who got the technical foul because there were three, at least three of the coaches were chirping over there over the call. And I think I would have been too if I was coaching, but. The bottom line is it's a 27-point game. Well, I, I don't think it would have really the, mattered a whole lot. You know, I really thought that the the Katy girls game against Bush that I broadcasted earlier today was going to be the bigger blowout, but it looks like the Spartans are on their way to a larger one. Unfortunately for the Tigers, and the Spartans come out with a little bit of a weave. Now Davis slows it down, and uh, Cluet has it down to... Uh, Farias and the shot attempt is no good. Rebound comes down to, to the Tigers. Mack has it, left side. Cut off by Van Horn and now Alex Martinez up top. Mack swinging around to Zach Martinez. Mack from the top of the key. No good. Uh, Roger, how many three-pointers do you think the Travis Tigers have today? I'm going to guess it's a very small number and I'm thinking two. You're too high. Only one. You're too high again. They haven't made any. According, wow. to, according to my unofficial book here, I haven't had a three-pointer in there. Now the ball's kicked by Zach Martinez, and uh, Spartans will inbound it underneath their own, well, on the side out here. Now I have no baskets from the three-point land listed on my sheet here. Now I could have, I could have missed one, but, you know... Oh, the ball was fumbled in bounds. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately for Cluet, he, he lost the ball as he was trying to pass it in. And it came in, and one of the Tigers was able to get it. And now Cluet is laughing that one off. That was, uh, when you're up by 27, you can laugh that one off. I guess so. And uh, he'll perhaps remember that humorous play later on. Here's a steal from the Spartans. Ball knocked off one of the Tigers, and Tigers get it back. All the way to the basket goes Matthew Wilson, and he lays it in. Nice layup for Wilson. Van Hooser has it. He penetrates left side, dishes it off to the left side. Long shot around and out. One of the few misses from uh, Blewett. One, yeah, of the, that, one of the few misses for the entire team. I'm not talking about Blewett, but uh, they're shooting pretty close to 50% from three-point land. They got 11 makes. You know, I, was, I forgot to put a bow on something, and it was really unfair to you. You were trying to describe, and I was throwing a question at you. That, that wasn't right, and I resolved not to do that in 2022. <laughs> But um, put the ball on it. When the Ridgepoint girls were knocking seven lakes out of the volleyball playoffs in the first round, Jeff Blum ah, was in the it. stands. Okay. His daughter plays for the Spartans. He was being a good dad because he was missing game six of the World Series. You're kidding me. And wow. no, I'm not kidding you, but uh, as good it turned him. out, I did not regret, and I'll bet Jeff Blum did not regret missing Game 6 of the World Series. Well, it was a debacle as the Astros showed no fight and gave up the ghost, and uh, it was just terrible. I didn't see the game either. Well, I, I, I just saw the score at one point, and I said, okay. Why no bother? No turning it on. Yeah. We got a timeout. Time hey, this is good. Uh, so, so, anyway, Mia Blum was a senior on the Spartans team, and I think uh, Jeff and his wife have at least a couple of other girls who are going to be coming up from the sub-varsity ranks, and they'll be on the Seven Lakes Spartans volleyball team going forward. And Amy Cataline used to be the head volleyball coach at Fort Bend, Austin, got the job at Seven Lakes and had several very fine teams but was able to break through and get the championship in 2020. I was very happy for her to see them do that. And, and it was all Houston final as they defeated Klein, the nice. Klein Bearcats. There you go. And Mack is at the free throw line for the Tigers. He makes his free throw. He was uh, 0 for 2 from the free throw line before that one. And he makes makes a free throw. It's 61 to 37 with 6.28 to play here in the fourth quarter from the Tiger Gymnasium. Here's the second free throw, it's good. Uh, speaking of volleyball, women's volleyball, 
the national championship for the women's volleyball NCAA went to the Wisconsin Badgers this year. How about that? How about that? I know you're proud. I'm very happy. I'm sure J.J. Watt is also as proud. A, as a Badger fan. Here's uh, Bates drilling, penetrating, and then dishing it off to number 12, Priam, who hits his second three. That's 12 threes in the ball game. Here's Martinez, and he's short on his three-pointer attempt. Blocked shot from, uh, let's see, that was Wilson trying to put the layup in, and he was... Farias called for the the uh, foul, and, and he felt like he got a clean block. It looked pretty good, actually, but uh, Wilson will take it. He'll go to the line for two, and his first free throw is nothing but the net. Yeah, it's tough to call some of those. Uh, you wonder where the contact is made. And must have got him with the body there or something there. 64 to 39, 551 to play. His second free throw is long. And the big guy is back in the ball game. Akpavwa with the rebound. Bates has it. He's had a heck of a second <laughs> half. Wow. Describe that one. Okay, uh, which Martinez twin is that, Zach? That's uh, that's Alex. Alex got leveled by the big guy, <laughs> and uh, they call the big guy for kind of, you know, put a little bit of arm into it, and that is his fifth foul, but he goes over and very graciously shakes hands with Travis coach Craig Brownson. Well, uh, let's specifically, he did the, uh, the fist bump. Okay, which you're has right. Become, which has become the modern day handshake now I think uh, not or, for or, me pal. Or, the, or the elbow the elbow bump yeah well I'm not giving in I'll shake anybody's hand you well are. almost anybody's yeah, you hand. are I won't say anybody's <laughs> here's a steal from Priam all the way to the basket and he commits a foul a charging foul that was a pretty good take by the basket for uh, Priam but I guess uh, Zach Martinez got in there quick enough to set his feet to develop a charging foul. 64 to 39, things have kind of slowed down a little bit here with some uh, personal fouls being called. Mack has it for the Tigers, trying to finish this game strong. And now a steal from Bates. He's taking it all the way in, he tried to slam it. And he came up short on it. He gets it back, though. Good pass inside to Garcia, who lays it in. That's his first basket of the ball game. Good job by Bates with the pass. But Bates blew the bunny. He did. He should. He was trying to slam it. He didn't quite get enough air under him to get that ball slammed in. And a kick ball now has Travis taking the ball out of bounds on their side, right in front of the, the coaches. It'll be, uh, trying to see who's passing the ball in. It's uh, Juanetti. He passes it in, it's deflected, Seven Lakes has it. Here comes Priam. He's taking it to the basket, passes it back out. Samiski. Tries to get back to Priam. Priam has it. A little turnaround jumper is good. Does anybody not score for Seven Lakes? I think it's mandatory. They, they all just, must score. They can all put that ball in the basket. Juanetti to the basket. He lays it in. Nice job by Jason Juanetti. He's had a pretty good ball game. Roger, you mentioned it earlier. Has Noah Samiski scored yet for Seven Lakes? Because he, he just came in. And neither has Cloette. Okay, so, so three and four? Three and four. They're looking at, I'm sure, the now number 21. He has not scored either. Uh, Luke Semenk. So th do Semenc. they have a Blewett? They have a Blewett Blue and, has, a, and a Cloette. Cloette, yeah. They don't rhyme with each other. I No. According to what I had heard earlier from Coach Heston, here's the three-point play being made by uh, Juan Eddy. They could change that, uh, you know, and do a talk show, the Blew It and Blew It show. Yes, you could do that. Here's a three-point attempt. No good. That was from Garcia. Rebound comes down to the Travis Tigers as Jones gets it off to Zach Martinez. Lays it in. 
Nice scoop shot by Zach Martinez. 68 to 44 is the score. As we are halfway through the fourth quarter, Zach Martinez steals it. Spin move up and no good, but he's fouled. He'll go to the free throw line for two free throws. Zach Martinez getting on the board here in the fourth quarter. Unfortunately, as uh, we've mentioned, it's been kind of a lopsided game in favor of the Spartans here. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people who have scored. Zach Martinez with his first free throw good. And I'll bet, you know, we've got the three, Samank, Cluett, or Cluett, and Samiski. They're all in the ballgame. I'll ball bet game. two of those three players will get in the scoring column before we're done. Mark that down. Good rebound off the missed free throw. Juanetti has it. Lays it up, and he's short on the shot, but a foul is going to be called on Far uh, Farias. And he was... Uh, Looking, looking a little mystified on the call. Thought he had his hands up straight. I'm not sure if I don't agree with him. Juanetti will go to the free throw line, though, for the Travis Tigers. He has, let's see what his point total is here. He's got uh, seven here in the half, a total of ten in the ball game for Jason Juanetti. Well, all is not lost for Travis. They still have a quality team, maybe not up to the the quality of talent that they've had in the past as uh, Juan Eddy makes the first free throw. But they will have Cameron Crockett back for their district games. And his being out of the lineup is a pretty big impact. Yes. Most definitely. He's Second a three. rim protector. A rim protector and also he's an offensive threat for sure. And Zach Martinez thrilling the fans, running all the way up to the top row uh, to go after a loose ball. High school sports. Mack has it for the Tigers. Nice little, uh, little crossover move. He takes it to the basket and lays it in from about uh, seven feet out. He's got the little floater going. He has 12 points in the ball game. He's had a pretty good ball game too. Justin Mack, the sophomore, according to my book here. Swinging around, Bates has it now for the Spartans. He looks cross court. He's trying to get a shot attempt for Simis Simiski, who uh, shot a couple times in the first half, couldn't quite put him in. You know they're trying to get these guys on the board, as Roger had mentioned. Roger has promised two of those three will get points. Well, let's see if that let's happens. go with predicted. He, oh, well, he, he, pre he predicted. Okay. I stand. I sit corrected. <laughs> Here's Davis. They're taking their time trying to find the shot. Van Horn swings it back to Bates. Down low. One of those guys had the ball. That is uh, uh, Samank. Warnetti takes it in, overlays it for the Tigers. And now the Spartans come out of there with it, and the pass is errant behind Bates. It goes out of bounds, and the Tigers will have it. 2.28 to play, 68-48 to 48 is the score. You know, next week when it's all district play, I can guarantee you a VipeFortBend.com broadcast will involve Elkins versus Bush. That'll be one of the games we do, Elkins boys against v Bush from Hobson Fieldhouse. The other games, I'm not sure, but we'll do at least one other, maybe two others. Good and sorry I talked over that. That's all right, as Nick Carroll takes it in for a layup for the Tigers. Nice drive for him. And he's on the board. And they brought in, I think, three players in the game that had not played before in the last break. Three-point attempt, no good. That was, I believe, Samiski again. Alex Martinez for the Tigers has it. Another shot attempt, short from Carroll that time. He was trying to add some points to his total there after he just made the layup. 152 to play, 68 to 50. It has not really been in doubt as to who's gonna win this ball game for quite a while now. I think, didn't Seven Lakes get out to a 19-4 to lead? I believe it was 19-4. And once they were up 19-4, yeah. to it's been like a boat race ever since. He, uh, yeah. Uh, Bronson, Coach Bronson took a timeout at that point. 
and it never got any better, unfortunately, for the Tigers. I think the closest they've gotten is 15. Good drive there by Garcia of the Spartans. He missed a shot, though. Good save by the Spartans. Pass down low. Number four has it this time. And that's one of the guys, Roger. Cloet okay. has scored. So one out of the three have scored, and now you have a 126 to fulfill the prediction. Do free throws count? Of course. Okay. Yes. It's a point, right? So we need number three or number 21. Exactly. To get on the board. Yep, it's either it's, uh, Semank or Semitsky. Semank and Semitsky, yeah, attorneys that, at law. That would be another uh, good radio show. And uh, there's Carroll again scoring. He's got three points here in the last couple minutes. That's Nick Carroll, the senior for the Tigers. He'll put the second one in as well. 70 to 52. Roger is looking very diligently at these two players who might be able to score. Here's a drive all the way to the basket, and there's going to be a charge called against Semitsky. He's one of the fellows that the prediction was made about. Yep. He, uh, he tried hard, but he did commit the foul. He, it was a pretty good position there by the Travis Tiger defender. And I'm going to go all Hall and Oates here and say so close, yet so far away. Boy. And that that's not only Hall and Oates. I would say that's... Uh, Oh, nice drive by Mack. He scores his, what, he's got eight points here in the half. He's got 14 points in the game. Well, the final margin may not look that bad. It's 16 right now. Yeah, it's good. 70 to 54. Drive down the lane. The Spartans are taking their time. They're really looking for a couple of players to score. They've had two players that are not on the book so far with points. Garcia dribbling around there and they're just running the clock now 30 seconds to play they're up by 16 maybe they won't shoot another shot Garcia has it again and they're just moving the ball blew it now Saminski and there's uh, Samank Samank thought about shooting but now there's 10 seconds to play and I think they're just going to hold the ball Roger your prediction came one player short unless he shoots it here nope he's going <laughs> to he's going to hold it off pretty good job of uh, sportsmanship there they're up by seven, 16 there's no no reason to score any more points when we finish this ball game this is the last as it was mentioned earlier the last broadcast of 2021 and it goes to the Spartans way 70 to 54 over the Tigers it is the last and we'll be back to wrap this one up after a word from first tire and automotive the first tire and automotive family wishes you happy holidays with these Merry Christmas of savings 10% off any and all repairs or $15 off an oil change head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings First Tire and Automotive has supported school and youth sports programs for years, getting you to and from the game always. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireandAuto.com. By FortBend.com, coverage of Fort Bend ISD High School Sports has been brought to you by Xfinity, the future of awesome. By First Tyron Automotive with their four great locations in Fort Bend County, including Katie Cinco Ranch for all you victorious Seven Lakes fans. They're right there where you can take your car in for the best prices on tires and service to keep your car running at its absolute best. We're also brought to you by the Needville Insurance Agency. You got teenage drivers, you got preteen drivers who will be driving soon. You got to get the best deal on your car insurance. And they can get it for you at the Needville Insurance Agency. Bradley Stavanaugh and his team will shop all the great carriers and get the best rate, not just for your car insurance, but also for your home. If you're thinking about upgrading to flood insurance, they can figure out a way where you can get flood insurance plus the usual home property damage insurance and pay less for the whole thing. They'll get it done for you at the Needville Insurance Agency. And we're also brought to you by Archer Volkswagen on the Southwest Freeway southbound side inside the Sam Houston Tollway. 
They've been open since 1956. They're there to serve you Monday through Saturday, and you'll feel like family when you're at Archer Volkswagen. Well, our final score is 70 to 54. Seven Lakes looks very impressive and a team that you would probably prefer to avoid at playoff time whenever the Class 6A teams in Fort Bend go into the first round of the playoffs. It's always against a Katy team, and, you know, there are several quality teams in Katy, but Seven Lakes may be the best of the lot. They certainly are good at shooting the three, and maybe they're not going to be at, as hot at shooting the three in every game as they were today, but that made the difference and it kind of was like a Tyson fight, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And, you know, they, they had 12. According to my book here, they had 12 threes to the Travis Tiger zero threes, which that's kind of unheard of in this day and age of uh, basketball. But the, uh, you said it right, Roger. The, the Spartans look good, and uh, they're 22 and three now. So they got a strong team, and probably somebody like you said we want to avoid in the playoffs. And another thing that I noticed just about their style of play and the, the frenetic pace of play, they just wear you out playing against them because they, they seem to contest not just every pass and not, not just every shot, but every pass. Yeah. And, right. you know, that you just don't get down there easily and, and find someone who's not being guarded and get an easy shot. I mean, they're just they're closing in on blocking your shot if you don't release it as quickly as you possibly can, and they, they also block a lot of shots. They're relentless. Yes. Well, so. Eye of the Tiger, though. Just remember, Cameron Crockett will be back, uh, presumably in the next game, and we'll have a full week of basketball, and we're still working out our schedule, but remember, it's kind of like we have 11 kids, or 22 if you count the boys' teams and the girls' teams. We try to spread the wealth, share the love, and uh, give proper attention to all the teams in Fort Bend ISD. And, and so we'll figure out what we're going to do next week. But uh, tell everybody, Patrick, uh, how you plan to spend New Year's Eve. You know, I told my wife today that yeah, we should go out for dinner, and she laughed at me. You're, are you serious? Because it's And you said you were very serious. Well, I said I was serious. I said, well, why don't we just do that one time? And she was talking about how busy it is on New Year's Eve. And, you know, she said it's a lot like Valentine's, you know, how busy it is. And I said, well, maybe we should go out and find out how busy it is because we never, we always avoid it. Well, that's know? a good point. But <laughs> also, to me, the, the main thing for so many folks is midnight. Right. Well, if you and your wife go out at 6.30 Early, and yeah. you're home by 7.30 or 8. Right. Well, then... Ain't no thing. Let, you know, <laughs> I'm going to let her know you said that, Roger. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, I, I'm kind of leery about being out on the roads after midnight right. on New no, Year's I, Eve. Yeah. So. If it's early, well, you know, it's not a big deal. I, that's kind of what I was saying to her, but uh, we'll see. How about you, Roger? What's your well, plan? Well, um, as, you know, as soon as uh, we get all our toys picked up here yes, and, yes. and leave this building, I'm going to go over and visit... Uh, my sister-in-law, Stacy, and her husband, James, and uh, my wife and I will go over there, and we're going to watch the college football playoff games. You got Alabama taking on Cincinnati first after, of course, the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl <laughs> from El Paso. Well, and, I saw a score they, on that. You don't want to hear the score, do you? No, nah, it doesn't really matter. I watched the, the recording of the Sun Bowl so I can see all the beauty shots of my beloved El Paso. Sure. I lived there eight and a half years. Uh, just wonderful place. Great yeah. memories of living there. So I always watch a replay of the Sun Bowl. Yeah, it's yeah. a sentimental game for you. Yeah. So and then you know after it's Alabama and Cincinnati, then it's Michigan and Georgia. You have any predictions on these games? Uh, are you going? Are you going chalk? I'm. I'm saying that that Georgia is going to rebound from its big loss to Alabama in the SEC championship game and find a way to win against Michigan. I think Michigan, very impressive team, but I think they have peaked. And I, I believe Alabama has to be the pick over Cincinnati. I just want Cincinnati to keep it competitive. If they can stay within 7, 10 points, something like, like that, then I Anything mean, it's got to happen. happen because in this stupid four-team bracket, they never let the little guy in. And if Cincinnati doesn't, make a good showing then they're never gonna let and, and for the next couple of seasons i guess we'll still be stuck with the four team bracket yeah. and the little guys have to make a good showing or they'll never get in again and that's right. just ridiculous it's just the opposite 
of March Madness, you know, where the, the little guy can go in there and knock off the team from the Big Shot Conference. Yeah, we'll and it happens all the time. We'll see if they can do it. It's going to be interesting. And Well, anyway, have a great New Year's Eve, Roger. Sounds like you got a great plan. And Well, uh, you mean as far as which broadcast we're going to do next week? I have no, no plan I, the, other the, than... No, the plan for your... Oh, the plan for, for, your, for tonight, for your, yeah. your evening. You're going you're, you're to be with your wife. You're going to be at your in-laws. Yeah. Sister-in-law, you said. Or? Well, yeah, sister-in-law and her husband, James. And, and technically, he's not my brother-in-law, but I say he is all the time. And their son, Jack, will be there and our son, Wesley. And I guess after that Georgia-Michigan game is over... I'd be happy to go home. <laughs> I would be happy to sleep through the stroke of midnight. Yeah. I don't have to stay up till oh. midnight. I'd, I'll feel a lot better in the morning if yeah. I go to bed earlier. <laughs> well, you're, you're you're getting old, Roger. Is that was that what that means? Yeah, I can't. Uh, I, I'd love to argue with you. To, somebody's trying to get through here. Again. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'd love to argue with you, but I can't. No, I'm just giving you a hard time. Okay. Yeah. All right, Roger. We've we've uh, we're in the way here, so. <laughs> We resolve in 2022 to stay out of people's way, but we haven't done that here. So for Patrick Kinnick, Suna Venkat, Merle Bertrand, Les Clary, Matt Malatesta, Derek Dushek, Bob McKay, Josh Cook, and the entire Vibe team, we thank you so much for being with us. Our final score again was 70 to 54, Seven Lakes over the Travis Tigers, and we'll rejoin you next week. For more basketball action, both boys and girls, goodbye and God bless and Happy New Year, Happy 2022 to all of you. Goodbye, everybody.